and it is one of the international languages written read is spoken almost all over the world no matter it is desert area or bright area of lighting new york chicago karachi lahore islamabad or any part of the world maybe africa that is known as the dark continent of the world maybe forest of africa some people residing there know the english language in one form or the other so this language is not more than 1100 years old prior to its origin in england some other languages were spoken there which are now obsolete or extinct that is what happens with various languages of the world they are no more here for example hebrew called ebrani in which allah revealed verses to isa alay salam sanskrit which is known as the grand grand mother of india or asia it is no more language there but some language is developed from hebrew and sanskrit so the oldest oldest language of england is not yet known what it was that was mixture of several languages now some incidents happened that became cause of the origin of the english language in england when we mean english it means language from england though there are some other parts of the united kingdom formerly ireland was also a part of the united kingdom which is now an independent country with its own currency constitution army and other national norms and principles and constitution now the united kingdom comprises three main parts scotland wales and england england being the largest part has capital london in it so overall the english language was planted in england first what happened two tribes invaded england they were anglo and saxon they brought with them their own languages whatever they were and with the mixture of languages already spoken there a new language came into being or originated it was known as the old english or the anglo saxon after the name of the tribes that invaded england about more than 100000 years back after some time some other tribes invaded england what how did it happen and why nations invaded other countries for wealth economic benefits and for power and the english people went to different parts of the country the same other people came to england with this idea so two other tribes were normans and northmen normans were from normandy france and north men were from holland for now called netherlands they also came with the idea of power economic benefits and supremacy or superiority in the world now with the mixture of other two languages a new language came into being and that came to be called the middle english this was the age of middle ages also in the history of europe after the revolution of france or french revolution the nations developed gradually slowly and gradually with french revolution many new things came into being printing press science and technology literature or areas of human knowledge developed profound, profoundly thence forward means after to the inventions of normans and northmen there was no more invasions against england and the language developed under its own impetus however two great things took place they were the invention of the printing press by william caxton in england about 1526 ad and the other was the invention of paper by china 
with these two great inventions a great revolution came in the language hundreds of books which were in manuscript form and hand written form they were brought to the press got published and sent to libraries for general reading public and on the markets for sale in this way the english language developed a lot it was a great development of the english language but the language didn't stop there like all other languages english also developed slowly and gradually it was 16th century when these two things took place printing press and an invention of paper by china was well, early 16th and early 20s this time great literary giants took birth william shakespeare francis bacon edmund spenser and thomas gray some of them to name here they brought revolution in the area or field of english literature hundreds of books were printed created and written francis bacon wrote essays william shakespeare wrote 105 sonnets and 36 plays comprising tragedies comedies histories and romances Edmund Spenser who was known and is still known as the poet poet <coughs> mad marvels in poetry he created great prosody and versifications and great poems in english literature it was a golden age known as the elizabethan age of english literature this was the time when the latin language was in full swing spread all over the all over europe and these authors edmund spenser francis bacon william shakespeare they used the latin language in their literature so it was a combination of two great languages latin and the english language our english language is mainly based or derived from has been derived from the latin language about 80% words of the english language come from the latin language in urdu sindhi we call it latini zuban this is mainly from italy where capital rome is located and the proverb goes the rome was not built in a day It's such a great task place to visit with historical places with great monuments with great monuments and great literature we have romantic plays dance romantic literature romantic songs and other comedies from italy that is why it is known as the seat of romanticism and great literature we have borrowed a great many things from latin literature the french language the origin of french language is also from the latin language from latin we have french and from french we have the english language if you happen to read any literature or any printed matter in french that reads like the english literature alphabet are the same but the only difference is the difference of pronunciation they make nasal sounds means sounds from nose alphabet are the same so the french language is also a great source of development of the english language now making of the english language language developed gradually this language has lavishly and generously borrowed from the other languages but the main source of the development are the great literary artists who wrote great books and added to the value of the language some people 
mistake subject for language and vice versa. Subject English means some contents of the subject, some prose, some exercises, a few poems that makes a good book of the English language. That is subject, taught right from class one to master's level. I mean English. But sub English as a language is a vast subject. It has vocabulary, phonemes, grammar, semantics, morphology, vocabulary, and so on. So English as a language developed a lot by these great literary authors who wrote masterpieces. And some of our, some of the works are bestsellers and some are Nobel Prize winners. We are very much there in the libraries. And we are really proud of those great authors who contributed a lot to the language. Now, borrowings into the English language. Almost every language of the world borrows from other languages. And no language of the world has ever remained independent of other languages. They have borrowed lavishly. The only language that has never ever borrowed from any other language is the Arabic language. It is known as the purest language of the world. No matter it is classical Arabic, middle level English, modern Arabic, or the language of the Holy Quran, it is almost free from all amalgamation or mixture or barrens from other languages. Maybe there are certain reasons behind. Maybe it is the language of Almighty Allah. It is the language of angels. It is the language of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it is the language of the Holy Quran. It is the language of grave. It is the language of hell and heaven. This is everywhere in the domain of those who are real believers in the existence of Almighty Allah, His angels, and belief in the hereafter and predestination. Development of the English language. English has certain ages. Old English means classical English, then Middle English, then Early Modern English, then Modern English, then Late Modern English, means quite modern now. In literature, it has set name, names of ages. For example, classical literature, Elizabethan age literature, Victorian age literature, Romantic age literature, Modern literature, and Late modern literature. These are known as the ages of Zamana, periods of literature. And we have long histories about the development of the English language. The books are available, very much available on the market. The English people, we will say the English people means people from England, who hail from England, who reside in England. They are known as the English people. Like the people living in France are called the French people. In Ireland, Irish. In Poland, Polish. In Russia, Russians, and so on. So the people who hail from England or reside there are called the English people. And it is the people who developed the English language. They went far and wide. Like Dutch people, like French people, the English people were and even now are adventurous people. They have traveled around the world mainly by sea, to find wealth. They went in it for economic interest and development, and also to find the place where they could rule. And it is fact, it is said that they ruled almost half of the world. And the sun never set in the domain or regime. For example, they came here, they went to North America, they went to Southern Hemisphere, they resided in Australia, New Zealand, now called Southern Hemisphere. So wherever they went, they planted the plant of the English language there. And it is very much now extant. To mention some people, 
who really worked a lot for the development of the English language. Some of them were from England, some from South Asia, where we, we dwell now. <coughs> to mention one, Captain Thomas Cook. He was a great navigator, a person who goes around the world by sea, is called navigator. He had some people along and went around the world. While circumnavigating, he halted at a place, he stopped there. He could take account of the world before his eyes. Lush green land, wildlife, fresh water resources, lush green mountains, snow-capped mountains, and he could reckon that the land was rich in natural resources, coal, gold, gas, and oil. So with this idea, he decided to settle there. He stayed there for some days with his sailors. Then he came back with some great idea in his mind. That was the age of Queen Victoria. It was 18th century. And he gave her complete report of the place where he had recently been to. And requested her to send some people with him to go there and settled there as a white settlement. It was very hard because according to certain economists, you can ship goods, animals, cattle, birds, and so on. But it is very difficult to shift person from one place to other, especially from one part of the world to other. Now, England was in Europe where it is still now, and Captain wanted Queen Victoria to leave some people with him to go there and settle there. So it was very difficult. An idea came to Queen's mind. There were certain people behind the bar. They were serving sentences. Some were criminals, some were gangsters, some were highwaymen, some were murderers. So they are serving sentences. They were in prison for punishment. So Captain said, they people can go there <coughs> as a means of punishment. This idea had the coin in her mind. So she asked all prisoners, especially male, to come with Captain Thomas Cook to that part of the world where nobody was there except Aborigines. The oldest people or native people living there are called Aborigines. How are you long to it? Their calling or business page profession was fishing and small patches of farming. They were not educated people. The oldest people living there means from long past. So some men, say about two full ships of men, they sailed to that part of the world which is now called Australia. It was about 300 years back, say about 1690 or two or 17 or 18,000 some, about 300 years back. So they sailed there and landed there. All were happy with life, all resources of living, they lived for some days. But they felt frustrated. They could not live without their sisters, mothers, wives, and so on. Allah says in the Quran, we created you Jorah, Jorah, Zawjain. So they felt kind of frustration, loneliness. Again, Captain Thomas Cook went back to England and requested Queen Victoria to allow some women to come with him to settle in Australia. Same problem again. Men could travel voluntarily. How can women leave their homes? Mothers, sisters, spouses, or unmarried girls. It was a difficult problem. But it has been 
observed that the English people are adventurous, no matter men or women, both genders were really volunteers, adventurous, creators, and courageous. So the women also prepared themselves mentally to sail to Australia. And when they reached there, they married together. Now it has been more than 300 years since they have been there. Unki saathi ya aathi peedi wa zinda hai. And also Aboriginal people are there. In this way, the English language was plotted there. <coughs> Some of them went as far as New Zealand. As we have the Bay of Bengal between India and Pakistan, they have the Tasman Sea between New Zealand and Australia. 1,000 miles distance. No matter you travel from Sydney or Melbourne, distance is almost the same. So some of them went to New Zealand and settled there. And people who are native people of New Zealand are Maoris. Maoris, tall, handsome, very good looking people, men and women. They have been there for centuries, prior to the settlement of the English people from England. So in this way, the English language developed a lot in southern hemisphere also. Some of the English people, maybe a handful, they traveled as far as North America where two great countries are now located. One is Canada and the other is the USA. Both countries are bilingual officially. Canada has French and English as two official languages. The USA has Spanish and English as official languages. So these English people went there, they ruled for quite a long time, yes, so they are very much there, and they developed the English language there. In this way, the English language went as far as Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere. Now, about the South Asia, where we dwell, it is a big land. Long ago, a Mughal dynasty head, Zahiruddin Babur, he established Mughal regime there perhaps in 1526. The same time man printed place was invited, about the same time. His office brings rulers, crown princes, one of them Emperor Jahangir. He allowed the English people to trade in India. He granted them license. The trading company was the East India Company. They came with the idea of trade, bringing some things from England and some from India to that part of the world, Europe. In this way, they entered into the South Asia. And the English people have always been adventurous. They don't only work for money, they have many vested interests in their mind. They are great rulers, great businessmen, politicians par excellence and really create a superb ideas to rule the world and to rule the world. So with this idea, the English people landed in India and a time came when they, when they mustered strength from army point of view, martial point of view and economic point of view and social relations point of view. So once they attacked India from Calcutta, it was a naval war, Samandri Jung. And you might know or know, I would like to tell you that the English had the best ever navy in the world, right from many centuries. They have good naval force and equipment. But that attack was foiled, means it was repulsed. Again they attacked and they were successful. A time came when the last Mughal Emperor Bahadur Shah Zafar II, 
he was imprisoned his sons and grandsons were killed before his eyes and he was sent into exile to rangoon where he died and is he is lying buried there in rangoon capital of burma in this way the mogul regime came to an end only because of their luxurious life irresponsibility negligence and very vast empire would you couldn't control properly is the revenue system lagan dhal rent they were unable to recover properly political affairs were badly maintained and as a result they lost a big empire to the english people who came in small number but were conquer but were really the winners or conquerors of that land ultimately Maulana Muhammad Ali Johor and Maulana Shaukat Ali Johor they are known Ali Bradran they could realize backwardness of the muslim people also people of india including hindus the hindus were very good at business the english language education they were doing very well as for the muslims they were backward in business in english in education and in politics as well so maulana mohammed ali johor issued a newspaper known as comrade is the name of english daily first it was published on the basis of week later it was published on alternate days and then it was published on daily basis as small daily of english news it was very much welcomed by the english people as well the language of the newspaper was crisp very simple idiomatic and metaphorical and very nice to go through so much so that the members of family wide with one another to read the newspaper first and sometimes when it received and little bit late they were anxiously awaiting the arrival of the newspaper it was such a great newspaper published by muslim scholar named of scholar mohammed ali jo so in this way english also developed there these scholars realized that there was no way out for the development or progress of the muslim nation without learning the english language some muslim scholars thought that english was dangerous thing for their faith for their religion for the religious activities there was a barrier or a kind of mission on the part of the english people to take them away from the religion but it was misconception misbelief a language cannot take you from your religion a language cannot make you an atheist a language cannot make you an infidel murtad that's not the role of language through language you can express your views you can make people understand what you mean you can demonstrate great things of the world you can make people know what you mean really mean so mohammed ali johor mad the english people muslim of india realized that english was indispensable for them there was quite an unavoidable there was no other way out except learning the english language and after his struggles many muslim scholars started sending their children to schools and colleges for learning the english language and that was a good idea on his part South Africa is spread of the English language in the subcontinent now and the great muslim scholar sir sayed ahmed khan he started a small school at ghazi for india then he shifted to aligarh we established a college with the idea of making the muslims of india understand the importance of education especially the english language medium instructions he worked very hard he traveled extensively he raised funds for the educational development of the muslims of india 
And with this idea, he really served very well the Muslims of India. In his college, that was later upgraded to the status of university, Aligarh University, a great number of Muslims got education, including women, men both. And that was a great age when Muslims really realized the importance of the education. South Africa, you might have known Nelson Mandela. He was behind the bar for 25 years. He was in the situation what was going on in political arena. And with the time, they controlled power, they usurped power and became the rulers. The African people, who were the true rulers and masters there, who were the real and legitimate rulers, they were, some of them were just killed, some put behind the bars, some were mad masters or slaves. So the English people ruled there for a long time. But they gave the African people a lot, some development, some good politics, some education, especially development and the spread of the English language through their regime there. Hindus' interest in the English language. Hindus have always been good in education. No matter their majority or minority, maybe India or some other part of the world, they understand the meaning of the English language. There is an old university in Taxila near Rawalpindi. A long ago a university was there and great people, professors, learned, demonstrators, scholars were from Hindu community. In philosophy, astrology, mathematics, they were from Hindu community. So they also were there in majority in India and they developed the English language. The East India Company already mentioned, already mentioned that they came from India under the title from, from England and the title of East India Company with the idea of business only. But later they changed themselves to politician and besides doing business, they overcame the English ruler, rulers and they used power and become the rulers themselves. Now I would like to refer to four words from the English language book. This is a small book for first year English. And there is one lesson in the English language with this title. And on the last page of this lesson there are four words which have been borrowed into the English language from other languages. The first word on that page is admiral. A-D-M-I-R-A-L means the highest position or status of naval force. This word has been borrowed from the Arabic language. Originally it was Amir al Bahar, means the prince of the sea, means the highest rank of naval force. So it was Amir al from Amir al Bahar. Later, some misguided scholars thought that D was missing in the first syllable. Now what is syllable? Slava is a part of word that comes on the tip of your tongue while speaking or comes on the tip of your pen while writing. It breaks into parts. Fast spread, for example, discipline. No matter how fast or slow you speak, it has three syllables. Discipline. Administrator. It has four syllables. In Sindhi Urdu it is called Pad. Pedal Pad. So they thought that the D was missing in the first syllable. So they added D to Amiral, Admiral. So a new word came from the Arabic language. The other word, the second one that appears on the, that page is, is Yacht, Y-A-C-H-T. The word is unusual as far as pronunciation, pronunciation and spelling is, are concerned. It is pronounced Yacht, C-Y-A-C-H-T, Yacht. Its literal meaning is fast hunting bird. A small boat used for hunting animals and birds. This word originally comes from the Dutch language. It means small hunting bird. The Dutch people gave a beautiful yacht to their king as a wedding gift. As a wedding gift. So this word comes from the Dutch language. And you know where the Dutch are? They are in? 
Holland now called the Netherlands. Very adventurous people, like English, they have been around the world for quite some time. And they rule, they have ruled some countries. For example, Morocco. Dutch people ruled there. French people ruled there some time. So Dutch people went around the world. The third world that is very much there is called <coughs> Sandwich. We call samosa pakora. This is not an English word like two other words, but it has been borrowed into the English language like the other words. Word sandwich comes from the Earl of Sandwich. This is Nawab Bahawalpur, Meer of Khairpur, Nawab Junagad, Nawab Hyderabad Dakhan, and so on. So there was an Earl of Sandwich. Sandwich was the name of his state, Jagir ka naam hai. He was very much fond of gambling. He would gamble throughout night without stopping for dinner or supper. And sometimes he would go hungry. So his servant invented a kind of meal that came to be called sandwich after his name. He put onion rings, tomato pieces, boiled eggs, some sauce inside those two pieces of bread and made a new kind of bread that came to be called sandwich after his name. The fourth word that appears there on that page is television. Kali means far, V and means to see, means to see far off. Dur darshan, pare pare ki chizhe kareeb dekhna aapne saamne. So tally is from Greek and vision is from Latin. On this pattern we have telephone, telegraph, telegram, teleprinter, telebusiness, television and so on. <coughs> so in this way, the English language developed a lot. Are there some, some other words? When the English people ruled here, they borrowed without any reservation some words from other languages. For example, from radio means radio from Arabic, rickshaw from Japanese, tea from Chinese, coffee from Turkish, Sipoi, Lati, Lassi, Kacha, Pakka, Guni, Thug, they are from Hindi languages. If you happen to shuffle pages of the English dictionary, Oxford dictionary, you will find hundreds of words from Indian languages mentioned like this <coughs> Hindi. Hindi means from Hindi language, means Indian languages. Now there are mainly two languages that we use these days. Beside this, we have Singlish, means Singapore English. We have Australian English. We have New Zealand English and so on. But mainly we come by or use two languages. One is American English, the other is the British English. In our computer, there is American English. There are three main differences only. Difference of spelling, difference of pronunciation, and difference of grammar. For example, H U M O U R is British English. American U is not there. H U M O R. Rumor, man, afwa. R U M O U R is British English. R U M O R, American English. Color, C O L O U R, American. C O A uh, British. C O L O R, American. Also, difference of pronunciation. For example, we say in American day, they say die. In American pay, they say pie. You, you come to die, to marni ayo. You come to die, man, to aaj ayo. You know, die, man, day, day. In the British, they say schedule. American, they say schedule. Besides, many words in American dictionary are not available, that are which are very much available in British dictionary, Oxford and Cambridge. For example, peon, P-E-O-N. They don't have peons in America, even in England. So peon word is not available in American dictionary. Also cleaner, C-L-E-A-N-E, -E, person who cleans tables or rooms. They don't have this word, they have janitor. J A N I T O R janitor. Other words. For example, hooky, H double O K Y. 
a person or a student who comes to school and runs away or he doesn't stay long, just runs away or sometimes he remains absent. School college ka bhagoda, it is called in British English plant in American hookie. Hookie. So you'll clearly find North American means American and Canadian or British English from England in North America and US and Canada. When we mean British English, it means in Australia is the same English. Same dictionary, same pronunciation, same spelling, same grammar. So the third main difference between these two Englishes is the difference of grammar. In American English, in most cases they don't use relative pronouns and relative adverbs. But in English grammar, it is very much true. He is the man who taught me basic English, American English. He is the man who, man taught me English, without who, in American English. So with slight difference of grammar, spelling and pronunciation, we have two Englishes here, and they are very much common. Four skills of the language. Almost all standard languages, Apart from vernaculars, <coughs> languages known as literary languages, languages used in writing a subject as medium of instructions all over the world, no matter what language it is, especially English, Latin, German, French, there are four skills of the language. The first one is the listening that I started with. No matter a baby understands or not, it just hears and makes some sense, right sense without any comprehension. The baby doesn't have idea of words, what is going on. Even whispering, some noises, some rattlings, baby is quite ignorant or unaware of these things. But with the passage of time, small baby develops an idea of listening or hearing. So the first skill is listening skill. When I say, do you listen me? I should say, do you hear me? The first word is to hear. When I hear carefully, then I can say, yes, I am listening. Yeah, you can say, do you, do you listen to what I say? <laughs> so, second skill is speaking. This comes slowly and gradually. So, first language there is mother tongue, then vernacular, then language of reading and writing in schools and colleges. Then literary language, when you become a scholar, a university, a college student, and you are now here. The third is a reading skill. It is said the readers are leaders. The more you read, the more you come to know about any language. English language is very much rich in literature. Right from fairy tales, stories for children, writings from stage and drama, a script for films and great literary genres such as novel, drama, prose, poetry and criticism. Reading is very much available there. But it is pity to say, it is quite regretted to say that reading is becoming a dying, dying habit. Now most people don't read. They take it a burden. They don't go through books. <coughs> and even if they read, they just have a, a screen of mobile phones before them and go through it. That's not a way of reading. In reading you, read very carefully. You skim, you scan, you make notes, you go back then whatever ideas attract you. And this way you develop a very good idea about the philosophy or style of writing of the author and theme of the book throughout. So reading a skill is really a great skill for writing. It lays foundation of writing. There is no writing without reading, no matter how good listener you are, how good speaker you are, but if you are not a good reader, you cannot be a good writer. For writing, reading extensively is very much important. And the fourth one, the most difficult skill is the writing skill. This comes with hard labor. Nothing is impossible. 
but takes time. A lot has to go into it. A much labor has to be put in it, then one becomes a good writer. For example, it is really a great pity and regret to say that for the past 30 years, two papers of thesis are badly failed. Candidates fail these two papers, English essay and English composition. Reasons are very clear. They don't have a plenty of vocabulary to their credit. They are ignorant of writing styles and grammar and use of vocabulary, placing right word at the right place and certain other implications of writing. They don't even have the proper practice of writing and they just appear at the exams and fail badly, especially these two papers. And it comes from the reflections from members of the Public Service Commission and chairman that most of the candidates don't understand the topic they write on. That is really pretty. So they should be good at writing. It takes some time. For the past five years, hardly 5% or 6% or 10% people pass. 90% people fail in English only because of their bad English. They really work hard, no doubt. We have no doubt about it. But reading and then proper art of writing, that is very necessary, very much important. Practice makes man perfect, the proverb. The more you read, the more you come to know. Just as a freelancer, just brainstorm and stop, start writing whatever comes to your mind. Maybe midnight, early in the morning, late in the night, just pick a piece of paper and a pencil and start writing. Ideas will just dawn on you. You'll be able to write whatever you want. Maybe there is writer's block, there are some hurt hurdles and deadlocks and problems. Stop there, no problem. Nobody has ever been perfect writer. We all are learners at the first stage. And nobody has ever been meticulous or impeccable. One has to go step by step. But it's a speed work. You have to do a lot while writing. If you start writing now, in five years, with extensive reading, you can become a superb writer. <coughs> superb writer. Take it for granted. Personal experience. 120 million words. This language has borrowed lavishly and generously from other languages, as I said earlier. Bara Lakhlavs. Nobody has ever been able to master all these words. Impossible. Even Shakespeare was not able to master all these words. He was able to write 36 plays and 105 sonnets. That's all. He died. And with this genre, his name is still alive in the world of literature. He is known as the national poet of England. And all of the greatest ever tragedy writers and comedy writers. Nobody has ever followed his put his prints and come to that level as he was. He was par excellent. His writings were par excellence. As for dramaturgy or playwriting, it was is called. He was a great writer. Now, averagely, every word has ten meanings. For example, pronoun it has eighteen rules and fifty uses. Preposition at 80 has 35 uses. Verb make and take both have more than 70 meanings. 70. And as many as pro idioms and phrases from make and take. So you can understand richness and greatness and real spirit of the language all over the world. Words of his speech means part of his speech. As a humble teacher of English, having more than 45 years teaching experience, I would say that half of the English language is embedded or comprised in vocabulary. If you are good at vocabulary, you can go very well. So in vocabulary, you have to learn family of words. For example, there are two parts of his speech which have degrees. There are adjectives 
एंड एडवर्ब्स पॉजिटिव कंपेरेटिव एंड सुपरलेटिव वर्ब्स हैव देयर पैराडाइम्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल सिट इट्स इंफिनेटिव मस्त इट्स सिंपल पास इज सैट इट्स पास पार्टिसिपल थर्ड फॉर्म इज अगेन सिट and its present participle is sitting a s i w t i n g and when when it comes to write third person singular present indefinite tense you have to put a s or e s with verb right right sit sits go goes and so on this is known as verb paradigm paradigm has two meanings in dictionary one is a very best form a very good form of something the other is forms of a word as i told you now it sit sat sit sitting and sits five forms it is known as verb paradigm read 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 reading reads go went gone gone goes and so on so you have to learn them by heart and it is very easy to do so very easy for example most students have problem in use of prepositions pre means before position means placement yes, okay. where to place normally preposition is used somewhere inside of the sentence but in some cases in the beginning and some cases in the end of the sentence so it has three places and there are three kinds of preposition simple two word preposition and phrasal or idiomatic preposition there are 37 simple prepositions two word preposition like into onto upon so they they are more than eight more than eight and phrasal or verb idiomatic prepositions are more than 100 there are hundreds in number not 2 3 5 or 100 there are hundreds sankaro choice of words how to use word and what is the right place of word for example word only if you place at different four places it will give different four meanings for example her only son died in a war it means she had only one son her son only died in the war means nobody else died except her son her son died only in a war mana he mad adventures he undertook different difficult things he was adventurous he was always at in danger but the place where he died was war was a jungle in this way with change of placement of word you can make different sense according to grammar not at your own will according to grammar word order right places of words used no matter it is a sentence comprising three words or 33 words 10 words or 20 words main thing is the choice of words and right place of the word that is very important let me give you some hint about choice of words for example a person doesn't have any shame he commits crime or ill deeds without feeling any shame or shame or shyness so he is called blatant blatant man without any shame without any shame he doesn't care about people morality society members of family and friends and people of neighborhood he does whatever he likes just open khulam khula and there is some person who doesn't care low of the land he is completely arrogant especially in doing things openly he is he is so courageous from negative point of view so is to burn they commit crimes or ill deeds so we can say it is flagrant khulam khula khulyo khulayo dandanata who doesn't care for anybody or especially the law of the land so this is main difference so blackguard is used for shame and flag is used for courage other difference meticulous and impeccable 
your performance, your dance, your writing, your speaking, your assignment, some other job that is interested to you, you perform it. If you don't make any mistake in it, as far as possible, your performance is impeccable. Impeccable means free from errors. Free from errors or mistakes. But you yourself, you are keen, very careful. You try your best to avoid making mistakes. You are meticulous. You are words have same meaning, but performance for performance is impeccable. For person we have meticulous. Its other word is keen, K W N keen. So there is slight difference of words, quite according to dosage of medicines. How much dose to give to some ailing person? What time and how much dose? That is very important. If you go beyond the prescribed dose. That won't work. Maybe it will work adversely. Hardly give a jar nuksan to give dawa. Here is the same case. If the words not properly used in the proper place. Sentence will burst. It won't give any sense. It will go in vain. Words you speak to the reader. Your reader is your judge. No matter he is really educated or not. But he has some sense. What is it? What he is going through? So your reader can make judgment whether you are a good writer or not. Especially gram grammar, choice of words, placement of words, sense, theme of the or idea, main idea you are taking ahead, joining of sentences, connecting words. That is called transitions. Idea going up from one place to other with sequence and coherence. That is very important. So your words speak to your reader, whether you are going right or wrong. Silent speakers. Your words are silent speakers. No several shades of meanings of words. The same words have several meanings. They are known as shades of meaning. Those aspects of meaning. For example, what is the sound? What is the sound? This is noun. It sounds so. When it appears so, yes, I like that. In like it, the verb. You look sound means you look healthy. Adjective. He was a great scholar. We won't find his lie. Azim fair sufta uska sani nahi milega. Now, you look like your father. You look like your mother. Preposition. Do like. When I do so, adverb. Do so, adverb. I like your habits. I don't like your habits. Verb, same word with like, a like a for use. It is called in language homonym. Yeah, homonym word with same spelling, almost same pronunciation has different meanings or uses. Now synonyms, words having same meaning. Synonym means same. Names means meaning. Words having same meanings are called synonyms. Words having opposite meaning are known as antonyms. Words having same spelling, almost same pronunciation are called homonyms. Pairs of words like a d v i c, a d v i s e, c o u n c i l, c o u n s e l, s o u c o u n s e l council, c o n s e l council council खाने का बड़ा official जो कि एम्बेसी में होता है, तो दिस पेयर्स ऑफ वर्ड्स आर आल्सो नोन एस ब्रेंड टीजर्स, दे आर नोन ब्रेंड टीजर्स और माइंड ब्लाइंग, मिस समटाइम्स दे हैव स्ट्रेंज मीनिंग, दे बॉगर, दे बॉगर लस, दे कंफ्यूज़ लस, सो वी हैव टू गो डीप डाउन इनटू द मीनिंग ऑफ़ दोस वर्ड्स टू अंडरस्टैंड देम that go down under the surface of water when they are submerged, maybe accidentally, maybe some other reason, maybe cause of death, and so on. So for a living being, maybe an ant or an elephant, chuti ho ya hathi ho, pani ke surface niche jayega drown istamar karenge. For living beings drown, for non-living sink. Those who are living being for going on the surface of water like this is called swim. swim. For non-living, we use float. For sometimes, as here I say, how these words are really placed in the contest. 
There is one lesson in Persian English. That is Barkan head drill. The ship meets an accident. It breaks into pieces. 171 men and children are saved. They are placed in the lifeboats and are to sail away. Now the remaining captain, along with his sailors, means young boys, army men, in red coated, in red coats. They are now thinking what to do. Now they have right to survive, make efforts to swim or to keep themselves from drowning or some such bad death into the bed of the sea while going down into the bed of sea. So what happens? The commander of the troops was hanging to some wreckage. He saw two young sailors who were struggling in the water for salt for life. The commander could understand their helplessness. So in order to save their lives, he pushed the racket towards them and all three held onto it. The commander realized that the racket was not strong enough to support three, so he laid his hold and sank into the sea. Now the author has used word sank instead of drowned. Why? Because there is no other way. Is there no other way? Is there no other way? Is there no other way? اپنے آپ کو بے جان کر کے چھوڑ دیا ہے تو یہاں نہ تو خودکشی کا ارادہ ہے نہ کوئی اور حادثہ سانے آئے وہ دو کو بچانے کے لیے نیچے گیا ہے تو بے جان ہو کے نیچے جانے کے لیے وہ سب نے ڈراؤن کے بجائے کیا ہے سمجھ کیا ہے سائنٹ دس از دا لینگویج اسکل ڈیلیکیسی از اف لینگویج ہاؤ یو ماسٹر اٹ ڈپینڈس ہاؤ مچ گڈ ریڈر یو آر کتنا آپ اچھا پڑھ سکتے ہیں کتنا آئیڈیا دے سکتے ہیں اور یہ تو ایسی چیز دی ہے جو جبرائی علیہ السلام کے پاس بھی نہیں ہے یہ کسی فرنگی کے پاس بھی نہیں ہے یہ کسی یہودی کے پاس بھی نہیں ہے یہ کسی ہندو بدھ کے پاس بھی نہیں ہے اگر انسان کے پاس ہے تو اللہ کی رحمت سے ہے یہ اس کی عطا نہیں ہے فبی آئی آ رہا ہے سورا الرحمان میں ایک بس بانی فرمایا تینتیس دفعہ فرمایا اس کو ایک دفعہ کہہ رہا کافی تھا رب العالمین نے اپنے تینتیس دفعہ کہا فبی آئی آ رہا ہے تو یہ ایسا دماغ کسی کی اپنی میراث نہیں ہے یہ اللہ کی عطا ہے یہ کسی فرشتے کے پاس بھی نہیں آپ کے پاس ہے ہمارے پاس وی ہیو ٹو میک بیسٹ آف اٹ اب اس کو آپ شیطانی استعمال کریں رحمانی استعمال کریں اٹ از یور ڈسیشن اٹ از یور ڈسیشن اینڈ اٹ از یو ہو ہیو ٹو میک بیسٹ آف اٹ سو اینڈ وی ہیو ورڈس لیبل ٹو بی کنفیوز ورڈس وڈ کریٹ کنفیوژن ان یور مائنڈ واٹ ٹو یوز اینڈ وین ٹو یوز اینڈ وے ٹو یوز So this is very important thing to know and this also comes through extensive reading. <coughs> then brain teasers means bogglers. Brain bogglers. <coughs> Initials. For example, UNO. Its brief is UN, United Nations. We don't say UNU or UN. We say UNO, UN. We pronounce words separately. IMF, International Monetary Fund. ILO, International Labor Organization, UNESCO, United Nations Educational Scientific, UNESCO, United Nations Educational Scientific and Science Organization, UNESCO, and UNICEF, United Nations International Children Emergency Fund. So we are UNICEF, UNESCO, IBRD, International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, known as World Bank, these are initials. But when these words are pronounced as words, letters, words, they become acronyms. They become acronyms. A C R O N Y M S acronyms. They become acronyms. Then contractions. For example, will not. Its contraction is won't. Does not. Its contraction is doesn't. These are known as contractions mukhafif, mukhafif, short form. And also abbreviations, for example, professor, mister, doctor, missus. When the first letter and the last letter is there, there's no need of a period or a point. Mister ka M, fir wala hai, aar akhri hai. 
कोई डांट देने की जरूरत नहीं है डॉक्टर का डी पहला है आर आखिर कोई डांट देने की जरूरत नहीं है मिसेस का एम पहला है एस आखिर कोई डांट देने की जरूरत नहीं प्रोफेसर का आखिरी लेटर जो है वो आर है तो यह डांट देगी तो ये जरूरी नहीं कि आपने हर जगह डांट देनी है कुछ लफ्ज जैसे ई टी सी एक्सेट्रा अब इसको हम ऐसे करके लिखते हैं दिस इज आर नॉन सेंस ए टी सी ऐसे लिखेंगे और जुमले के आखिर में या दरमियान में हो ये देंगे उसके बाद आगे चलेंगे तो काम देंगे ये सारे रूल्स हैं वाई मोस्ट ऑफ द कैंडिडेट फेल एज आ सेट अर्ली ओनली बिकॉज दे डोंट फॉलो इंग्लिश ग्रामर रूल्स और लैंग्वेज रूल्स पंक्शन मार्क्स एंड यूज ऑफ राइट वर्ड विद राइट प्लेस देर आर मोर देन थ्री थाउजेंड बेसिक थिंग्स थ्री थाउजेंड इफ यू डोंट नो देम यू डोंट नो इंग्लिश कंप्यूटर में पी एच डी करके आ जाए फिजिक्स में करके आ जाए चलिए सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग में करके इलेक्ट्रिकल में करके आ जाए माइनस ये है डिग्री होगी पी एच डी साफ डॉक्टर कहेंगे इंग्लिश नहीं आएगी इंग्लिश नहीं आएगी हमारे पास सानिया क्या है छः महीने पढ़ते हैं तीन चार साल पढ़ते हैं पाँच साल पढ़ते हैं मैथमेटिक्स में इक्यानवे इंग्लिश में उन्नीस मैथमेटिक्स में इक्यानवे इंग्लिश में उसके ये गाली है बुरी बात है बेगैरती की चीज़ है जहर है क्या चीज़ है कि रात दिन मैथमेटिक मैथमेटिक मैथमेट करे 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 अखियो अधिक अधिक उन विवाद को चलिए नो कैडिंग नेवर कैड नो कैडिंग मेरा एक बार नोट नोट हो रहा है फर्स्ट दो नोट है रिकॉर्डिंग हो रही मेरी यदि ये रिकॉर्डिंग कर सर ये मेरी भी रिकॉर्डिंग हो रही है सो यू हैव टू कीप बैलेंस यू शुड बी सम आर गुड एट इंग्लिश दर नो वे अदर देन इंग्लिश ये और बात है कि तीस साल पहले पच्चीस साल पहले हमारे फिजिक्स के केमिस्ट्री के बाटनी के जूलॉजी के इसदा सिंधी उर्दू में पढ़ाते थे अभी वैसे ही पढ़ा रहे और बच्चों को वहीं उसकी अंग्रेजी कतल हो जाती कतल आप जब उसको अपने ग्यारहवीं बार में नहीं पढ़ाया होगी क्या पढ़ेगा वो वो फिजिक्स कैसे पढ़ेगा कैसे समझाएगा उसको तो हमने सिंधी उर्दू में समझाया प्रैक्टिकल भी सिंधी उर्दू में कराया उसको तो इंग्लिश तो अपने पता ही नहीं है बाकी उसने डट के पढ़ाया जैसे ही पढ़ाया डट के पढ़ाया डट के पढ़ाया पढ़ाया बस पास हो गया अलहमद अच्छा देर आर टू काइंड ऑफ वर्ड्स इन इंग्लिश सिंपल वर्ड्स And compound words. No matter how small a word is, at, in, on, of, o, w, by, 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 they are simple words. Words combined together with hyphen or without hyphen are known compound words. For example, moth eaten books. Father-in-law. Father-in-law. अभी आपके father-in-law में देर है. अभी सोच अपना आन रखे मौथ इटन मौथ इटन बुक ए बुक दैट हैज बिन डिस्ट्रॉयड बाई मौथ दीमक खाई हुई किताब तो कंपाउंड वर्ड एडजिट बेड रीड इन पैशन ए पैशन बेड इन बेड फॉर लॉन्ग टाइम एंड डेवलप्ड और गॉड फ्रेल ग्राउंड फ्रेल बिस्तर में रह रहा कि कमजोर हो गया इस तरह Rust eaten <coughs> tools. ऐसे औजार जिनको दीमक खा गई रस्ट ईटन ये कंपाउंड वर्ड एडजेक्टिव है दे मॉडिफाई नाउन दे आर नोन एज कंपाउंड वर्ड फादर ला मदर ला सिस्टर इन ला ब्रादर ला कमांडर इन चीफ एंड सो ऑन देर आर हंड्रेड सच एग्जाम्पल यूज ऑफ वर्ड इंग्लिश इट हैज एटलीस्ट फाइव यूज The same is mentioned in the end with an ink. So the English as a subject is known as English. English as a language, the same second meaning. People from England are also English. Then proper adjective, apart from proper noun, English people, English subject, English name. Then proper adjective, English culture. English people, English civilization, English history, English tradition, English drama, English movie, they are proper adjectives. The fifth use is in email. English boot house sucker, English cloth house other crachi. When you write an email, e is always small. No matter what letters are in a word, in email you use small order. 
is more English boat house, English hardware, English electronics, and so on. Is sparing. Our English has innumerable diseases. It suffers from various diseases. जैसे आगा खान की लेबार्टी में मरीज को ले जाते हैं तो वो महसूस करता है तीन बीमारियां और तेरह बीमारियां लगती हैं इसको भी इंग्लिश की लेबॉरटरी में ले जाएंगे तो कम अज कम सत्तर से ज्यादा बीमारियां हैं इसकी पहली बीमारी इंटरनेशनल बीमारी स्पेरिंग स्पेरिंग वो है नंबर वन एनी में आप स्पेरिंग खुदा जाने ये चीज हम कब से वी आर मैक मिस्टर नो प्रॉब्लम आपने पच्चीस पेज का ऐसा लिखा डज इन मैटर गो ओवर इट मैक नेसर करेक्शन एंड समथिंग बाट यू लाइक मे बी फुल ऑफ करेक्शन देर इज रिवार्ड नो पनिशमेंट नो पेनाल्टी वो खुश होगा कि आपने करेक्शन किए यू हैव गो ओवर इट यू हैव गॉन ओवर इट एंड मैड नेसेसरी करेक्शन एंड एडिशन एडिटिंग किया आपने लेकिन वो पढ़ेंगे नहीं कुछ नहीं करेंगे एक पेज पर दस दस बारह बारह गलतियाँ हैं कामा के भी है स्पेलिंग के भी है फुल स्टाफ की है वर्ड आर्डर भी सही नहीं है चॉइस भी सही नहीं है सेंस भी नहीं है सिक्वेंस भी नहीं है कोई रेंस भी नहीं है रिलेटिव प्रोनाउंस एडवर्ड भी सही नहीं है टेंस भी सही नहीं है तो तो बवाल हो जाएगा आप कहेंगे मार्क्स जो आएंगे वो इतने आएंगे ये निकल जाएगा मैं जाके ये नंबर लेती है जो बगैर तैयारी इम्तान में बैठती है खुदकुशी करते हैं गरीब आदमी के लिए एक नंबर एक लाख रुपए का है सी एस एस पी सी एस का और एक अटैम्प्ट एक करोड़ रुपए का अमीर की बात नहीं करो गरीब की बात मोहन जैसा जिसका बाप स्कूल का चपरासी था एक नंबर एक लाख रुपए का एक नंबर करोड़ रुपए का ये जब आप बैठेंगे पता चलेगा कितना कीमती है यहाँ एक मोहम्मद रमजान साहब आए जाजमानी खुदा का मुजाहिद फॉरन सर्विस में सफ़ी था यहाँ आए चीफ मिनिस्टर साहब उनको लाए हर साल कमीशन का इम्तहान करा रहे हैं हर साल इम्तहान कर रहे पाँच पाँच साल छः छः साल आठ आठ साल इम्तहान जरूर था सोचिए ऐसे इम्तहानों के लिए यू हैव टू प्रिपेयर योर सेल्फ देर लॉट ऑफ प्रेपरेशन नीडेड ओके देर प्रॉपर ग्रा फोर ग्रामर सम पीपल से देर इज नो ग्रामर इन अमेरिकन इंग्लिश हाउ कम रेडिक्यूलस इन लैंग्वेज इंटरनेशनल लैंग्वेज इन अ ग्रेट एमोसफियर नॉर्थन एमोसफियर comprised of two great countries two great powers including the super power the us and canada how can their english be poor or un- without grammar if you happen to write to any american canadian university with some query query about their education system financial assistance they provide fee structure they have and the courses they afford offer you will receive a very good letter very in- informative and with very good english They have nice English. How come they don't have English? Are they have English without grammar? It's all silly foolishness. We don't, we don't shouldn't say like that. Tense. There's always tense. If there's no sense, sentence is nonsense. At least the banda is nonsense. जो write करता है. Tense के बगैर कोई भी जुबला नहीं. उसके बाद sense. Tense creates sense. Your language creates sense. The words you place wisely they create sense, and there's always sense when you remain them to create sense. It's right, sensible to right. So with this, we'll stop here just to give you a brief idea of the language. Again, I would say that three things are very important: grammar, writing practice, and reading. Use of grammar, writing practice, and reading. Just take a piece of paper and start writing about yourself, about your country, about in season, the weather, and what is going on in your country, your friends, your family members of your family, your parents, your teachers, your daily activities, your diary. So you can make marvels, right? And the time will come when you will really laugh at, or gently smile at your own writing, which you did long, long ago. You'll be a good writer with the passage of time. Thing is, where there's a will, there's a way. The more you put in, the more you get. Okay, then you just not meet her down on your own. Zai ka aga meet her na dar na sugar ho jayegi. Ye wo meet her nahi hai. Yahan meet her man heart labor. Yahan meet her na. So you have to be a real ideal student of this institution. You are lucky enough to be here. You are getting good education. You will have nice teachers here. So you have to make best of your energy. Your time, the facility, library, 
time and whatever is given here that is marvelous don't take it easy don't work here like a guest or for the time being you have to be here forever for the timing you have to work very hard that you are always everywhere you will be held high in society but you work hard it's up to you whether you make your best or worst your work best it, it is up to you worst and best is up to you you are the champion of your soul and captain of your ship you have to make best thank you very much